So here we are, let's talk about sidestep maneuvers. Now, a couple of you guys asked me this question in the Discord. I see it pop up uh, on the comment section a lot. And that is, how do you properly handle a sidestep maneuver from air traffic control? Now, a sidestep maneuver is when you are already on an approach, typically inside the final approach fix, and the ATC asks you to land on a different parallel runway. Sometimes it's one to the left, one to the right. It just depends on the needs of air traffic control. Sometimes you may even request a sidestep maneuver if you want to land on the other side of the airport. Maybe it's closer to your gate. This is a common thing that we do is if you're flying a red eye flight at night and you're coming into the airport and there's really no traffic. Maybe you want to land on the other side of the runway complex so you don't have to taxi for 20 minutes back to your gate. So a sidestep maneuver is fairly common whether you're on VATSIM, Pilot Edge, any ATC network, and for us real world pilots. Now there's a couple different ways you can handle a sidestep maneuver in the Airbus. I'm going to try to talk you through a couple of those right now. One thing I want you to take note of and remember though is that as desktop sim pilots sometimes we have to kind of alter the way we do things because we don't have that two crew environment. Now if you are in a two crew environment maybe you're using the smart co-pilot config file for the TOLIS aircraft or, or whatever you may be doing it is definitely handy to have somebody in the other seat that can dial in your approach for you in the box because once we are below a thousand feet when you start trying to hand fly and the autopilot's off and you want to set up something in the mcdu you could end it up in a bad situation or put the aircraft in a position for an unstable approach therefore causing a go around making the situation even worse so i'm going to try to give you some tools to help you work around that let's go ahead and talk about it right now Okay, so we are lined up on the ILS runway one left into Tampa International Airport. You can see the aircraft has just captured the glide, slip, glide slope, the localizer, and we are beginning our descent down. We're going to simulate a sidestep maneuver, let's say around 1,500 feet or so. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause the sim. I'm going to continue configuring the aircraft as I would on approach. Landing gear is coming down. Speed is managed. VFV next minus 10, flaps 3. Arm the speed brakes. Our lights are on. So let's say we're right about here and air traffic control comes on and says, hey, I need you to sidestep to runway one right. Okay, there's two different ways you can handle this. You can use the autopilot, but the problem with using the autopilot is when we go into heading mode, vertical speed mode, you may end up in a position a lot lower or higher depending upon the airport that you're flying into. And the reason for that is on this particular example that I'm doing for you, and this is the reason I did this, is these runways are not that close to each other, okay? You may get a sidestep maneuver with two close parallel runways, not a big deal. You can just cheat in heading mode, vertical speed, get over there and, and do what you need to do. But on a sidestep, when you're actually crossing the terminals like this, I would highly suggest that you turn off your automation and you just focus on hand flying the aircraft. Remember, we're below 1800 feet. We're 1800 feet over the ground right now because we're at sea level things start to happen fast and you can definitely get in a bad situation very quickly. Now, some operators may require us in real life to actually have an approach programmed for the runway that we are landing on, no exceptions. Now, that's going to vary operator to operator. Some may not care. Some may require it. Some may require you just have the center line fix. Personally, I think you should always have some sort of approach, at the very least have the runway selected in the MCDU, that way you don't land on the wrong airport or the wrong runway altogether. It has happened before with by commercial pilots, by very famous airlines, it just happens. So one way to mitigate that risk is to always put something in the box. Now. I'm going to show you how to do that, and we're also going to utilize the bird. The bird is going to be extremely key in the sidestep maneuver. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause the sim. I'm going to disconnect the autopilot with the disconnect push button on the side stick. At this point, I'm also going to give myself the bird. Now, oh, looks like we hit a little bit of a turbulence there. Now you can see, let me get the flight director off here on my side. Okay, so I got my flight director off. You can see the bird. Now the bird is a very useful tool, especially in any type of maneuvering approach, whether it's a circle to land or a sidestep maneuver. There are two parts of the bird I want you to memorize and use them to your advantage. 
If you want to stay wings level, it's very simple. You split the donut of the bird. So you see how there's a, there's a circle here. If you split the donut on the horizon line or just put the wings exactly on the horizon line, your aircraft will be completely level. You will not be descending or climbing. It's a very easy pictorial. As the airspeed is trending down from 180 knots or wherever you may be configuring for landing, your pitch attitude is going to be slightly changing. Now we're in a 321, so we know it comes in relatively flat, about one to two degrees nose up. But if you're in a 319 or the 320, your pitch may be varying quite a bit depending on when you've begun this maneuver. So utilizing the bird for just wings level is going to help you a lot. Also, if you want to pick up your descent rate, a standard three degree descent is going to be by placing the tail of the bird. You can kind of see it's kind of masked by the attitude indicator there, but the tail of the bird, if you put the bottom of it right on the horizon line, that is a three degree flight path angle down to the ground. So those are two parts of information that you need to have in your mind when you're using this bird. All right, so as we approach 1,500 feet here, I'm going to go ahead and turn the autopilot off with the instinctive disconnect push button. As I begin my turn away, I'm going to go ahead and turn my flight directors off and my localizer and slope off because I'm not going to be using those. I'm going to pull up my bird here, give me the bird, track FPA, and I'm going to shallow out my descent just a little bit because I know as I traverse laterally here across the ground, I don't want to keep descending at the same rate that I was descending for one left because I'm going to end up significantly low. Now, at this point is where you have to make a decision. So in real life, if I was flying this in X-Plane right now, in real life X-Plane, on VATSIM or Pilot Edge, I would program the box. Now, the thing with programming the box at this stage is a little bit sketchy because if you aren't quick and you don't know exactly which buttons to press, you may end up overshooting your runway, you may end up high, you may end up low, you may end up in a bad situation. So I would only advise doing this technique if you are very confident with your ability to program the MCDU. If you are not, or maybe you just don't think it's a good idea, maybe you're even lower, maybe you're at like 700 feet or 800 feet, at this point, guys, your automation is off. I still have the auto thrust on. You can leave it on or turn it off, but just fly the airplane. Take the aircraft from this position, fly your bird down a little bit till you can start seeing your pappies or your vassies, and just get the airplane in a nice normal position to land and be a pilot, land the airplane. The Airbus hand flies really nice. You're going to love it. Now, Let's take it a step further though, for the guys that are advanced and want to program something in the box, we are going to utilize the Airbus's fly-by-wire capabilities to its full potential. Now, in real life, I would definitely not be flying the airplane with the autopilot off and programming something here in the box. I would definitely have my first officer programming it and I would be completely focused on hand flying the aircraft. If he gets it programmed in time, great. If he doesn't, not a big deal. It's visual, I can see the airport. I can see the runway, there's really no need for it, except if your operator requires you to have some type of runway structure in the MCDU prior to touchdown, you would need to do this. Before I unpause the sim here, I want you to understand what we're gonna do, because it's gonna happen really quick. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna select my runway one left, and then on my approaches, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and I'm going to select just runway zero one right. I'm not going to select the localizer, I'm not going to select the RNAV. I know on my descent, briefing for Tampa International Airport that there is no ILS to runway one right. So inside of a thousand feet here, or 1500 feet, there's no need to load up the localizer. There is no need to load up the RNAV. Just give me the center line fix for runway zero one right. The runways will always be at the very bottom of your approach selection. So you'll have your ILSs, you'll have your localizers, you'll have your RNAVs, and then you'll have your runway just set extended center line fixes in the box. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the airplane in a position that is pretty stable, about uh, two or three degrees nose low. We're on speed and I'm at a 45 degree angle to intercept the final full run for runway one right. If I leave my hands off the stick, the fly-by-wire will take care of it. That is a great advantage of having fly-by-wire. So we'll unpause here. I'm going to go select Tampa, arrival. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm going to select runway one right there it is back to my temporary back to insert now you'll notice right here we get the select heading track first i don't know i actually i'm not quite sure why this is popping up the aircraft this should not pop up because we are in a track mode number one and number two we're not you know we're we're select we're in select that everything's off so it should auto populate this i don't know why it's giving me this bug but what i found what you need to do is if you just put your flight director back on for a second insert this 
turn your flight director back off, everything will work just fine. So I'm gonna go on, flight directors, insert that, flight director back off, and now we're back to flying the airplane. Begin my left turn here to line up with one runway zero, one right. I can see I'm one red there, so I can go ahead and pick up that descent rate. Let's go ahead and get that tail below the horizon for a standard three degree descent path. I've got runway one right here confirmed. I can see that I'm landing on runway one right. I have one runway one right in the box as well. So now the aircraft is in a stable position to land. We were able to successfully navigate a a large sidestep here and keep the airplane in a normal position to land. So things to remember, utilize your bird, utilize the wings level function of just putting the wings level on the horizon and utilizing the descent rate tool here. I'm right now, see I'm putting that tail on the horizon line just below the horizon to get a three degree descent path. Um, Going a little bit steeper here to catch up to this pappy. But if you use the tools that the Airbus has available to you, you will really be able to enjoy all of the benefits of this airplane that we have. And the fly-by-wire capability is a huge help in close here, especially on a sidestep maneuver like that when I need to use my hands to program the MCDU. Keep it in here nice and stable, 50 feet over the threshold. 50, 40, 30, 20, 20 retard, 10. And there we go, nice touchdown. Maintain that center line. I don't know why my landing rate didn't pop up there. It looks like the old one did. That looks like a butter to me. And there you have it. That is a lateral sidestep with using almost all of the available tools the Airbus has to give us. So that's the first method that we talked about. You have to program it, hand fly it over. The second method is a lot easier in my opinion. Autopilot comes off, begin managing the speed, gears coming down, arm the spoilers, get the flaps configured, we'll take it all the way down. Let's say we get a close in one here, right? We'll go flaps full, cabin check, lights are on. Let's say we keep coming down, we're following the glide slope. We're going to be like, man, this is going to be a butter here, beautiful approach, no wind. And as we approach a thousand feet or so, air traffic control comes on and says, hey, can, uh, I need you to accept runway one right or you're gonna, we need spacing. Well, yeah, we can accept one right because we know what? We put it in the secondary flight plan. So very easy. I'm gonna begin flying the airplane first, right? Let's go ahead and turn our flight directors off. Always fly the airplane first. I'm gonna give myself the bird here as I make my sidestep maneuver. I'm gonna have to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna go secondary, activate secondary, and look at that, we now have runway one right programmed in the MCDU. I'm gonna go ahead and level off right now because I know coming in here like this on this, this in close like this and going this far laterally, I don't wanna descend all the way down because I'm going to end up low as I roll out on final. But as I shallow out, look at that, split the donut nice and easy. I'm starting to see my pappies now. I have two whites, two reds. Start getting that nose down. And I'm just going to follow a three degree flight path angle with my bird because I know that would be a traditional three degree glide slope. Got a little bit higher there. There we go. We're back on it. Two whites, two reds. And just like that, with the press of two or three buttons, I have the secondary flight plan activated and I've got a center line fix in there to reference on my ND to make sure I am landing on the correct runway. And that is why we program our secondary flight plan. Now, I understand that it's not possible to have every uh, runway set up in the secondary because you may not know which runway you're going to be going into. And they may give you a side step to a different runway. At that point, we're going to just have to fly the airplane. All right, and there you have it, guys. So those are two different methods for you to use when you get a sidestep maneuver from air traffic control. Remember, when all else fails, if you're in close, you don't think you can program the box in time, just turn your automation off and hand fly the airplane, keep the airplane in a stable position to land all the way to the ground, and you're gonna end up just fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you again here real soon.